Alrighty, so in today's video, we're going to overview the application registry service and we're going to take a look at the specification pattern that has been implemented over there. My name is Vasily Lenik and you're watching the .NET architecture series where we are building a notification system from scratch using industry's best practices. In the previous video, we have touched the application registry service itself in the context of enabling and adding pagination and sorting to our queries. Today we're going to take a deeper look into how it was all implemented and add the specification pattern that we have in the other method of our application registry. Let's get started with the contracts. We have briefly touched it previously. So we have the iApplication repository, which has two methods, the get list async, where we have enabled our pagination and the get by code, where we have implemented our specification pattern. Uh, the query itself is only one, the get application list query, which goes over here. And the models themselves are pretty straightforward. We have application, which has code, name, and a list of events. And the events themselves have basically only a code and a name. Now, if we go over to the implementation of the application registry, over here we have more folders, which are basically cross-cutting, data, infrastructure, routing, and services. Let's start off with the routing. And over here we have the application endpoints. So the next thing is the application registry installer, where we basically have a couple of methods. First of all, is adding the, I, the application registry service, where we specify how we want to configure our application DB context. Next, we add the scoped application repository implementation to the I application repository. And over here we have a decorate. And I'll leave over here somewhere or in the notation, a link to a video where I go in depth how we can implement decorator pattern inside our system. So this is basically a cache decorator for our I application repository. Over here we have the application model migrations where we basically get an application DB context, then we run our migrations and the use app registry endpoints where we want to use our endpoints to get to our application service. Uh, next we have data, which is really big, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's get over with the models. We have the application data model with a code name and the list of event data models. Over here, we have the event data model, basically code name and reference to the application itself. Some people might want to use the models from over here inside their entity framework. I don't really like that since I want to let the contract part evolve on its own and let the event or the data models evolve on their own. So I don't like coupling myself to the models from the contracts in this regard. Uh, next, we have configuration, which is a basic int type configuration. I also have a video on this. I'll link it over here somewhere where I go over how to correctly implement the configuration. The event data model configuration is really similar. We have a defined composite key defined over here, a code and an application code. We have a proper, uh, the property marked as required and the relationship over here. Next is the mappings. And this is essentially, it's just some projections that some custom projections that we have over here in a later video, we're going to go over mapster, which is overkill for two properties and a single list of other objects. But we want to go over it nonetheless and see how it can be configured for larger projects and larger objects. The next folder is migrations basically an initial migrations for these two models. And we have the seed, which we can use to run our initial seeding. So we have some data over here and we're basically adding it inside a migration. Uh, in order to enable the seed applications, we should go to the application DB context over here and take a look at how it is configured. So we have injected the token service for future reference when we will be implementing uh, multi-tenancy inside our application. But for now, we just basically apply configurations from this set assembly. And over here, we specify that we want to seed the applications. So that's basically all. You have an extension method, static extension method over here where you define the data that you want to seed. 
and inside the application db context you basically call that set method. We should, with all that, the introduction is finished and we can go to the specification pattern itself. So let me close all these tabs. The specification is a really neat software design pattern that is frequently used in domain-driven design context. Uh, however, it can be applied in other particular contexts as well. Essentially, we will be just recombining different business logic rules in order to get a Boolean result in the end. The easy explanation is you basically check if your object or your data meets specific criteria. To get started with the specification, we should go to our shared library over here and to the specifications folder. Right here we have the specification class, which is a public abstract class of T, where T is a class, and we have a protected constructor which receives some form of criteria. Besides the criteria itself, we have a couple more properties where we have the include, the order by, order by descending, which basically are just some functions, and the include is basically a list of objects that we want to run our queries in entity frame. So we can run application and then just include the application events themselves. We have order by descending, uh, two methods to add include and add order by, and order by descending if we need to do that. And this is basically everything from the specification part. So all our other specifications will inherit from this specification class and basically set up in their, their own criteria for matching the specification. Beside, besides this abstract class, we need a query builder that is gonna run our specifications and it's over here. The class itself is pretty straightforward. So we get an iQueryable of source and we get a specification. Next, we're basically just assigning the source to a query. If the specification criteria is not null, we just basically run a where clause with this certain criteria over here. Next, we basically run an include query, aggregate everything we need from the include list. Uh, we run some order by if it's not null, else if we run an order by if it's not null, and else we basically order by descending. And we return the resulting I queryable. A good, now let's take a look at some specifics and we're gonna go to the specifications folder over here and we have application with events by code specification, which will basically retrieve the application with all its events by a specific application code. It's pretty simple over here. The class itself looks like this. It inherits from the specification and mentions that it's working with an application data model. And inside here, we have the basic criteria where we specify that we want our app code to lower to match the application code that we receive inside the constructor. So we can have a custom constructor where we pass some specific string and then we will call the protected constructor from the specification itself with the criteria that we want to pass in. So our criteria is the code to match the one that we have provided over here. Besides that, we want to include our events inside our iQueryable since we want to query the events as well and we want to add order by code. We can as well just add order by descending and add other includes in here as well. So it will resolve everything inside the query builder itself. If we want, we can chain multiple specifications in a row, which I did in some other projects. And the result was pretty neat since we've reduced the amount of code and the amount of two lower and checks like that throughout our repository's code base. Now let's see how this looks inside our service. So we go to application repository and we go up on top to the get by code async method. And over here we have the specification query builder where we specify that we want to build a query on top of our context.applications. Uh, and we have this one specification, which is the new application with events by code specification. And we pass in the code that we received inside the method itself. Then we run a first or default async with the cancellation token passed and we return this application itself. It's pretty easy and you can see how this reduced the amount of code that we have over here. 
And basically in the future, whenever we will need to get an application by code, we will no longer need to remember that we need to get the code to a lower case and then compare it to a lower case code that we received inside the method. Everything is taken care of inside a single place over here, which is really amazing if you ask me. So that was it for this video. We went over the application registry implementation and especially the specification pattern itself which is pretty easy, but still offers you a lot of power behind the scenes. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the cross-cutting concerns for the application registry and small spoiler, we're going to have a deep dive into cache topic inside an ASP.NET application and everything you need to know about cache patterns, how to use cache and all of that. I'll leave over here somewhere couple of videos that you can watch preventively about how you can implement cache with Redis inside .NET Core. And yeah, see you next time.